Oh, he hello there. Okay, yeah, you've been weird. But well, that's fun. So. Oh, Jesse. Don't make fun of me. Oh, I totally don't do it. Anyway. Okay, I'm walking over here. This is, um, well, first of all, hi. Sorry we've kind of, like, gone dark for a month. Um, but I promise we're not gonna do you wrong in making good content. Um, so here at Stevenson, we have tenor drums because we have a good drum line. And any good drum line has tenor drums. And tenor drums need to be tuned in order to sound the best they can. Well, every drum has to be tuned. That's true. Every drum should be tuned, at least in tune with itself. Maybe not a specific note, but it should at least sound, have a, have a good tone. So at least have more of them and a good tone. Yeah. Tenors. They would differ from band to band. Yeah. Depending on the ensemble, and this ensemble is specifically like in a, a drum line for a marching band, we, at Stevenson, we have three tenors total. Today we're going to be tuning mine and Isaac's, and um, they all have to be tuned to the same notes. Um, and these notes are as follows, F sharp, A, C, E flat, F sharp again, and then E flat again. And that is on drums four, three, two, one, and spot two and spot one, in that order that we yep. just said. So, yep. Or as we like to call it, FACAFI. That just sounds fun. That, it is fun. It's an acronym that works. It doesn't have too many consonants. And, um, but yeah, all the tenors need to sound the same. That way, when they play clean, they all sound like they're in unison. Because they should be in unison. I feel like I'm just rambling, but that's okay. Yeah. We're, we're still new at this. We're learning as well. Um, yeah. Just moving along. Anyway, that, I need an F sharp, lower one. Okay. First thing you'd want to do, he played my tuning note on the vibraphone over there. What you want to do is take a stick, and another note in saving drum heads, because these heads are kind of old and worn down, uh, use a stick with a bead that is not really rough. You, and if it is rough, you can just take a piece of sandpaper, sand that down, because the jagged edges can actually have a negative effect on the heads and make them wear down easier. Yeah, or split them. It is wear them down. Yeah, can yeah, I can literally like cut them open if you do it right. But he play, can you play my tuning note again? That's obviously not right. So. It's not that far off. Can you hit it one more time? I believe this needs to go higher. Another thing with tuning is the way the drum feels as well. As you move each lug, you can tell if it is like you can you you'll just know because some lugs won't feel the same when it comes to a matter of tension. They'll feel looser than other lugs, and then you'll know that there is something wrong. Alright, can you hit it one more time? Can you hit it one more time? I just want to make sure. It's not that bad. The reason we're actually tuning, we haven't had these drums out in actually like a few months. Marching band season is over for us. almost three, like it's like two yeah, it's been about two and a half. And the reason we're getting them out finally after all this time is because uh, we have a bat we're playing at a basketball game tomorrow, which is, we don't usually do that actually. It's uh, uh, districts, I think it is. Uh, I don't know, but I know that the next one, if they do win this one, it's districts. So, okay. Yeah. So if they win this what one, they go to districts. Really it's an important game, yeah. <laughs> so they will, uh, we were asked to play at it, which is really awesome, um, and do like a little halftime thing, I'm pretty sure. Yeah. So we're going to play some uh, drum cheers and all that cool stuff. Um, but yeah, we thought since we haven't had them out in a while, we should probably tune them, and since now we have a YouTube channel, we can take that time and make content out of it, and also maybe help you guys out. Uh, the next note is A. Natural? Uh, yes. One more time. I think this one needs to come down a little bit, but... I think... 
needs to go up. Sorry. Yeah, See, this is why... Unless if you have, like, really good pitch or something, you should probably do this with at least one other person. With Yeah, our band director is actually right over there. <laughs> um, yeah, and also have some kind of keyboard or tuner handy as well. Me, I personally like to use an actual instrument keyboard, just because it gives more like a raw, like you, you, you know it's most likely not raw. Pitch pipes. Pitch pipes, there we go. So you either have an instrument, a pitch pipe, or this way that you turn it to call it the Yeah. Alright, can you hit the A? Up, up again. Another thing about tenors, uh, when, when it comes to the entire drum line, it's a unit and uh, the unit is supposed to resemble somewhat of a moving drum set, or a moving louder drum set, to be exact. And the tenors, obviously, uh, pretty nicely resemble, resemble the tom drums as well. Um, and that's but what they are, pretty much. Pretty much, they're yeah. They're just a bunch of toms slapped together in different sizes that have different Yeah, but they're not exactly the same, which is why, like, they obviously sound somewhat different um, they're played differently. You don't hit in the center, you hit towards uh, the edge in certain zones, that way you get the best tone. And also, it requires a bit of more beefier layered heads. They also have different shapes, you can't see it because it's cut off right now. Alright, yeah. move it. Give you a little, a little tour they have of the different, configuration. Yeah, different shapes, it curves upwards here. And most notable difference, no bottom head. Just fingers can go right in there. That's so the sound can shoot out a bit more. Because they are for marching, so. Yeah. Projection is just a big thing on that one. It's better. It's obviously not exact, but it is better. And it never will be. It never will be exact. Keep that in mind. Unless if you have, if you're like some weird, perfect pitch genius freak of nature, it's never gonna be right. What? An A. It's flat. Uh, yep, I can hear it now. Yeah. So you give it a look. Goodness gracious! I don't trust you! Yeah, I bet they are now. Well, yeah. The camera's very actively being spoken to. I'd be concerned if it was not, if this one was not awake. I'll leave it to work. Yeah. Well, we would, we would do all this for nothing. That is second, everyone. Oh yeah, that's our band director's second, by the way. Another thing with tuning, marching drums specifically, is you probably have a drum key or two at home if you are a percussionist drum or whatever. But with marching drums, you can't use one of those normal ones that are smaller, typically. What you need is one of these high torque ones. They have longer rods that you can used to turn, and they're typically longer and, and like deeper as well. Uh, this is the one by Vic Firth. They make a very nice one. Vic Firth I'm, makes great things percussion-wise. Yeah. Though. They don't just make sticks and mallets, although their sticks and mallets are amazing. They also make drum gadgets, drum keys, and even like stick bags and mallet holders and stuff. And when it comes to the instruments themselves? When it comes to the instruments themselves, these are Yamaha drums. So it's like a good chunk of things that we own. Yeah, we have a lot of Yamaha equipment. Great. Great. That's a lot better. Next, back to C. The next one um, is C, I believe? Yes, back to C. You're right. <laughs> <laughs> See, acronyms help you remember things. Can you hit the C again? I wasn't paying attention. I'm making the rock face. 
I think this needs to go up. Yeah. Typically, if you haven't played drums in a while, or if you, or if you haven't played the drums you're tuning in a while, or you beat on the heads for a long time, they'll tend to go down in pitch. It, because you hit things, and they get jimmied. Yeah. And you also, temperature can have a bit of an impact on it as oh, well. Temperature sucks. Yeah, a lot of you wind players will probably know this, flute players especially, uh, like in the heat, uh, instruments in pitch tend to go up. And in the cold, they tend to go down and be more flat. And these, the worst enemy of tenors, is water. Water. It, like, it's there are some times where you can't avoid it. Like, if you're at a football game or near a parade and it starts raining, water can be your greatest enemy. Not only does it, like, dampen your heads till no end, causing you to have to play extra loud just to be heard, but also, if the water gets in there just right, it can slip in between the layers of the head and stay in there. It makes a weird twang sound. And it makes a weird twang sound and also just makes it sound bad. Yeah. Anyway. It needs to go up again. Yeah, playing it up as well is also a great way to check to see if you are doing it correctly. It adds a bit of a more melodic structure to the drum line, if you might see in like a lot of drum core and indoor drum line and stuff. Uh, without tenors, it would just sound like a slam of rhythms. I mean, you got you have like the tonal bass drums where each one is a different size and they all do splits and stuff. Like that's awesome. Like after tenors, bass drum, we love bass drum actually. Yeah, up again. I do not have a bass player. I tune my own. Yeah, I couldn't, I mean, hey, the vibraphone's all the way over there, and I don't have a tuning app, although there are tons out there. I should really get on that. Yeah, It's solid, yeah. All right. Back. Uh, I think. I know it's F sharp. Uh, it's E flat. Okay, so it's F sharp A C E flat F sharp E flat. Six drums total. Six drums total. Sorry. It's mostly, it'll mostly just be up. You are pretty much never going to tune them downward. Yeah. And another thing about, as far as the melodic structure and the whole drum set analogy of the battery goes, uh, tenors, unlike the, the, their tom drum counterparts on the drum set, uh, they aren't normally tuned as deep as a tom drum, and a lot of the splits that the bass drums do can like make up for that and emulate that sound pretty well. And also bass drums are huge, which means they're loud. The uh, entire drum line is simply a drum set. Basically, a louder, a louder moving drum set. Yeah. Yeah. Snare, another snare, tenors, and basses are both toms, and then basses are also kick drums. Okay. Go figure. Who would have thought? Who'd have thunk it? Who'd have thunk the thought? And also these heads, by the way, I should probably mention, they are Remo Pinstripe Clear Crimp Lock. Made in the USA. Remo, we love Remo. Remo makes great products as well as Vic Firth. Um, drum heads, drum pads, even. Like, 
most of our, all of our head remote. Basically, all, it, isn't it probably just like two or three hundred? Yeah, all of our tenor and snare heads are by Remo. Our bass drum heads, those are all Evans. And then we have one Aquarian head in the entire building that's on our jazz snare drum because Aquarian heads have a lot of like rough textures that are good for playing with brushes. Gee, I wonder where we're going this time. Yep. <laughs> well, not, well, yeah, back up, actually. Yeah. What are you looking for? No, they're just looking at heads. Oh. Uh, yeah, we should probably take inventory pretty soon. We should also probably clean that up. Yeah, our percussion room is a mess. You can kind of see it back there. We still got a setup drum set, which should be what you got. Okay. Yeah. We actually. Um, I'm putting together like my own drum set for our musical, um, we're, cause our school's musical this year, we are doing Mean Girls, cause they recently just released the rights and we've been preparing it for a while. So, um, one weekend in April, y'all should come out and see us. Yeah. I keep making the face, like the... <laughs> Up. Another tip, so we are actually on to the Spock drums. A lot of you who have seen tenor drums or have even played on them, a lot of you probably know them to only have four drums and primarily call them quads. But... Or also very common are quits. Yeah. Yeah. We don't, we don't have those. We just say tenors or multi-tenors or whatever. We actually have a total of six drums. I'm pretty sure I said that earlier. But um, we are onto what are called the Spock drums, which are a six inch and a eight inch drum. And they are very high pitched. A lot of the times when snares play shots, um, chances are the tenors will also be playing shots uh, as well, primarily on these drums, which the Spock drums, funnily enough, are also referred to as shock toms as well, or shock toms. Either way, they have a lot of names actually. Yeah, yeah they're just very high pitched. This one obviously needs to go up because it's supposed to be an F sharp, one exactly one octave higher than this drum. But of course, be careful not to tighten these heads too high because they are very small and they can be cracked if tightened too hard. It will also just Yep. It can't do it stupidly. Yeah. Which is why to always have another person or take like time to learn about how to do this as well. A little higher so I'm doing little turns never like consider like a certain amount of turns because you just need to do it enough to where you get to the pitch you need unless if you're obviously because when it comes to tuning drums it, it's all about the situation like in this case we need this set and that set of all six drums to be tuned to the exact same notes that way we sound good together. And uniform. And uniform. Uh, drum lines are all about uniform. Yeah. All right. Also, uh, Sounds a little higher. What? Oh, wait. You were playing two? Oh, two. I don't know why I said two, I have something like one. Oh, okay. Wait, are you playing two or one? I'm playing one, because one is the third number. One is, no, one is E flat. 
one. Yeah. Again, doing it in a group. So no, I was two. I'm one. Oh, okay. We can come back to it. Yeah. Let's just focus on uh, the Spock. Yeah, it needs to go up again. All right, one more time. Are you sure? Yeah. Um, it, it's good enough for now. It's just really high. <laughs> Oh, E flat? Back one. <laughs> Higher. Yeah. The lowest Spock, or the highest Spock, the six inch drum, which is the smallest drum on the entire set, is probably one of the hardest drums to tune. At least when getting a specific note. Most people just tune it up really high. Um, some, of, some people are perfectionists and like to get it to the certain note. And for the purpose of this video, we are going to try to get it to that note. Um, and also, another thing about six inch heads, they also break the most. So, note for your drum line, make sure you have a few handy every season because chances are one is gonna snap at some point, or maybe it won't, I don't know. Just make sure, you can never be too prepared. Drum line requires the most time. Yep. <laughs> You got a notification. <laughs> We're recording this off of Isaac's phone. We are working on getting another camera and another mic. What kind of notification was it? I don't know. I think it was YouTube. I don't check them. But they don't vibrate, so they're not in the way. Yeah, that's true. I think that's good. I mean, I can check the tension. I don't want to overshoot it because I don't want to break this head. Then we have to change the head, and that's going to be like a whole other video. Oh. Yeah, we don't, our stands are out in the trailer, so we actually set the tenors on chairs. That way, when we tune them, we can give the drums some space for their tone to actually ring out and like project a bit more. That way, it's easier for us to hear it. Uh, rather than well, we just... do have three tenors. We only have two with six. Um, the other one, I didn't say eight. Is that yeah, the other the other set of tenors, we actually it only has five drums, and they're also like a bit smaller as well. Yeah. So, um, and we're not sure if that guy's gonna be playing with us tomorrow. Although we should, we should probably check with him. Yeah. Uh, do you have another one? Uh, yeah, I do. Right. Yeah. We're going to be playing for a bunch of basketball fans anyway. I don't know if yeah, they'll oh, notice, yeah. but... They're totally not going to pay attention. Yeah. Now for the other part. Getting the drums in tune with each other. All right. At this point, depending on who you are and what your situation is, because tuning is always, as I say, situational, depending on whatever drum it is, whatever setting or style of music it is. But in this case, um, we don't necessarily need the keyboard anymore. I mean, if we can, if we compare those drums to this drum and we see something is off, we'll consult whatever tuner we're using again. But in this case, um, like I said, we're just playing at a ba at one basketball game, and we're and then they're being put they're back into the closet for a while. Yeah, and then they're being put back into the locker for the probably until what June? Yeah, probably June. Around June, we'll get them back out, and then our season will start up again, which will be fun. Yeah. If you Although can. last season was my last year on tenors, I'll be moving to snare drum this next season. Um, well, it's a good thing or a bad thing, you can decide. But as drum major. 
Um, I would like there to be uh, as many tenors out in the field as a time at a time, because last season we had three tenors, including myself. And while I was on the podium conducting, we only had two out there for like a band of over 100 people, and we had six snares. So I feel like, in my opinion, sacrificing one of the six snares rather than one of the three tenors is more. Even if we have six snares next year. Yeah, and that's only if we have six snares. But five. even then, snares have a very distinct sound and can cut through the band a lot yeah. easier than. They bring it a lot easier than tenors because the snares you're always gonna hear them. Tenors. <laughs> yeah, it's kind of iffy. <laughs> All right. You want me to hit those and you tune these, or you hit those and I tune these? Uh, you can hit these and I'll tune those. Open it open. Should we give this then a bit of an angle? Let's shift around. Yeah. There, we, there we go. <laughs> All right, wait, I should probably get the stick. Uh, so let's just move the camera. Let's just scoot right there. Yeah. It's just... Sorry if our methods of recording are a little scuffed. We're, like I said, we're still getting new to this, and we're still learning on how to create content. Also working on better, getting better equipment as well. And also you can't really see my face. Um, I'll just kneel back. Chair. Or I'll use this chair. The chair is probably going to be easier. What? What is it? Yep. Okay. Wow. Yeah. Very easy, noticeable difference. So obviously we go up. Again. Yeah. And the more easier as well. There you go, we got my piano bench. Why do you just have this? Why do we have two of them? It's gonna be a cool one. Yeah. And another announcement while I'm doing this. Um, a new idea I had, which I did not tell you about. I'm telling you about this right now. Okay. Is, as I've noticed, now, alright. Open, open it. We're not leaving. Not all of our viewers and subscribers, which we know most of you personally, um, are percussionists. And you may not know what a lot of the instruments are that we play. So an idea that I we had, um, or that I had, I was yeah. like an instrument showcase of such. In a sense, yeah. We'll just post short videos of either one of us just playing a little improv solo or jam on certain instruments and then, and then a synopsis just, of kind of like what the instrument is yeah and then a little like um explanation behind the instrument and what it is I like that and if you think it's not going to be a long series it will be there's so many instruments. I'm, I'm making a list right now it's already <laughs> like four pages long and it's not i'm not even done yet do you, i'm not do, even do halfway you have the done and <laughs> i have the djembe i don't have the other one though we need to find a djembe though but they're not that hard to yeah. find Wait, one more time. I think... It sound, this one sounds higher. Yeah, you're right. I like the I way this could, sounds better. I just though. couldn't hear it very well from over here. Yeah. So do you want to tune that one up? Chances are the head went down because... These are old raggedy heads, and we gotta get them into gear. Another thing about heads, spe new heads specifically, these are no by no means new, at least from is what it, I can it, remember. They should but, be new. We put these on like right before festival. Yeah, they should be relatively new, but what can you do? And also, we play very hard. <laughs> and also, it rained day of festival, so I will. Get yeah, it also rained day of festival. There. It was very epic, but it also it was. Add some negative effects, especially the ride home. <laughs> okay, that's fine. That's fine by me. <laughs> so yeah, back to the series. I had the idea of uh, titling it "Random Notes." So like, if you see us post a video that's like random notes followed by an instrument, whatever the instrument may be, um, yeah, just be on the lookout for that. We're gonna try to be posting on a consistent basis now, um, and keep moving forward. Keep that. Okay. Anyway, drum three. Uh, a. That needs to go up. Yeah. You can't really. This is kind of off camera, but drum four is you know drum three is 
be. Yeah. They're also not arranged like tom drums you would find on a drum set either. They're arranged more for like weight balance and for easy playability. On tom, they would normally be arranged just one through lowest number you have. Yeah. So but then one, again, two, three, four, five, and then toms are arranged in four is on your left, three is on your right, two is up. Crap. I, I was trying it. to aim the camera towards you so you could explain it. I will grab it. Okay. There we go. Yeah. Uh, four is on your left, three is on your right, two is up left, th um, one is upright, and then spot two and spot one. Spot yeah, they're arranged kind of funny, but it's for weight distribution since these things are very heavy on your back while carrying them for prolonged amounts of time. Okay. I'll be out of the camera now, so I can tell you. Okay. Also, this is kind of a bit of a late notice, but keep in mind we are not professionals yet. So, you may or may not want to take everything we're saying with a grain of salt, being that we're still, like, in high school and kids. But we're good. But we're good. <laughs> we both intend on music being a big part of our that lives. That also isn't subjective. That is an objective fact. Yeah. We are, in fact, good. Yeah, we're actually coming. We both here. we both got division one in states. This dude has a lot of division ones in general. They just I don't want I don't want I wanna sound humble, especially when I put myself out there publicly. But I'm just saying. Yeah. Also, not states. We have division one in districts. We're yeah. going to states next Saturday. Yeah. Which states we will hopefully at, record. Yeah. Oh, at Chippewa. Chippewa Valley High School. So if you wanna come out and see us Chances are we'll be there, or it's on the weekend, so you'll probably want the weekend to so. Yeah. I need, I need to do my hair again. Huh? Anyways. Anywho. You're done. Yep. Okay. There you go. Next. <laughs> yep. Up again. Well, let me rearrange these a little bit. Keep in mind, these drums did fall over a little bit before we started recording. It totally was not But luckily, fault. since they're Yamaha, they're almost indestructible. So, they're also kind of heavy. Um, wait, that is not an excuse to well, treat them wrong, they need to be treated great. Yeah. Um, it was simply an accident. Yeah. Want to talk about the shape of tuning? The shape? Oh, yeah. As you might have noticed, I'm not going like this around each to each lug. I'm actually doing somewhat of a star pattern across each lug, going from this one to this one to this one to this one, or some kind of pattern like that. Because the thing about the drum heads and the bearing edges that the drum heads sit on, they can get warped if they're too tight in one area, causing them to not be perfectly level, but kind of like bow a little bit and be ugly and also be bad and wrong and, and once again can break the head it can yeah <laughs> it can break the head and also it makes your drums just not be good or be not good that's not english for a section where we hit things it is as you'd expect things do break yeah it's mainly just heads though most things don't break yeah Oh, and sticks. Yeah, sticks. Like I'm not. Like, I'm not even gonna show you the ones I've been using. Yeah. Well, not not these ones, but my other ones in my stick bags. Someone has an entire bag full of broken sticks. Yeah. They've been called kill sticks because it's funny. And that someone is. Not me. Oh it's wait. Blondie. Oh yeah, the other one. Um. Anyway. Up again. Also, I'm not just saying Blondie because I'm rude. That is literally her nickname, and she's fine with it. Yeah. Before anyone tries to say anything about it. Literally everyone in the drum line, they, we have nicknames. Um, some have multiple nicknames, some have... Some are good nicknames, some are just 
not. Yeah. I don't really have a nickname. Uh, although like, You have like several. You I have, have several. Beanin, but... You have Brendan, which isn't even your name. But yeah, funny. I hate. Brandon. Don't. If you ever call me Brandon, just be prepared for me to like. Throw a stick at you. Throw something at you. <laughs> I hate the name Brandon. Brendan. You can call me Brandon or even like Brad. Like, I can live with Brad, Brandon. Like, I was supposed to be named Brandon. I can live with that. I know Brayden's not Where's really. Is he a junior? Yeah. My dad's name is Brandon. Um, anyway, can you hit the C again? I think that's good enough. Anywho. Good enough. Yep. It's a call and response. <laughs> It's a really fun thing you should try. Uh, if you, you and you and another percussionist come together, on um, whatever instrument it is, just play a rhythm. One of you. Can honestly, just be any um, instrument. Yeah. And yeah, it doesn't have to be the same. It can be two different instruments. Yeah. Just play a rhythm and then have somebody else play a rhythm back at you. Before I realize that I tangled these when I hit them. Continue oh, yeah. what you're doing. Okay. Yeah, going, like call and response, it's usually called trading in jazz, but it is very like common and it's very fun to both play and watch. And Armstrong was very big on doing that. Yeah, if any of you know. He was who... also very big on not actually doing what the music said. He'd yeah. Look at the music and kind of just. He wouldn't do what it said, but he'd play something that fits into what yeah. was written. It's used as a reference, and a lot of jazz musicians, like drummers, percussionists, uh, specifically, like, we use the music mostly just for reference, and then do whatever, uh, we'll listen to a recording of somebody else playing it. Another thing about jazz is just people stealing from each other. Or, it's not I like stealing. The, I it like is the, a collective yeah, mind. I think of it as like a collective mind, or I'd like to think of it as that way. All music flows into a single point in someone's head, and bada bing, you yeah. play it. And then that influences someone else's playing, and etc, etc. Yeah, that's why we have so many different genres of music. Like, you have funk, you have metal, you have, you have funk. funk, you have funk metal. You have funk and funk. You have funk and funk, <laughs> there is a difference. This sounds high. Higher. Oh, yeah, you're right. See? Teamwork. Two people! Also, neither of us have perfect pitch. I have also now become a hand. Yeah, he's just a hand now. I'm kidding. He's right over there. It's like thing from Adam. From Adam. Oh, no, I hated that guy. Why do you hate Cousin <laughs> Thing? He's literally just a hand. He's great. I know, he, 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 he creeped me out as a child, but now I don't really mind him. Oh, well, it's like a, a half step down, if not more. I, like I said, no perfect pitch here. How long have we been going? 38 minutes. 38 minutes, oh my gosh. Sorry for the long video, but... No one's gonna sit through this, and if they do, thank you. Yeah, if you sit through this, or even, like, like and comment, as long as the comment is relevant and not stupid. Or racist. Oh, yeah. Again. <laughs> uh, watch your back. Continue. <laughs> Great! Next! Alright, Spock. Coincidence. Hi. <laughs> yep. But as far as our viewers go, you guys are, whether or not you guys are like good people or not, you're still an OG. And we're very thankful that you guys are taking the time out of your precious lives and just. Yay, friends. Yeah, and just looking at into what we do as musicians and artists and um, helping us helping support us as future content creators. And uh, hopefully it'll be more than just our friends following us. Yeah. I also now just a hand. Yeah. 
Can you do the llama? Make I cannot the, the, do the llama. The llama. Oh, just this. Oh, yeah. Sweet. <laughs> Spock. You see, it's ironic, because this... I love Spock drums. If, tenor, if tenors didn't have Spock drums, it would be very sad. Imagine not having two Spock drums. <laughs> Yeah, our the third our third tenor player. He didn't have any. He had one Spock actually. Oh, when I played in the Rose Bowl parade with the Salvation Army this year, if you didn't see the Rose Bowl parade or like no, if you're not in this area, you might not know that I was actually in the Rose Bowl parade and I grew up in the Salvation Army since I was like a, I was born basically, and I've been a musician in the Salvation Army as well. And they knew I was a marching. I had marching experience. So for the past two years, our the bandmaster of the Great Lakes Division asked me personally if I would uh, help them out and march in their drum line. Last year I played snare drum, this year I played tenors, and the tenors didn't have any Spocks. I was very sad. But they were Pearl drums, and Pearl makes some nice drums. Anyway. Alright, sorry for all the rambling. I wanted it to not just be a tuning video, but also yeah. another video to where we can. Fun. Yeah. It's more talking about our lives. Yeah, more. It's it's like a not necessarily a Q and A. We haven't really asked for a Q and A, nor have we gotten any questions. Um, but we might do one of those soon. Hey, maybe we'll do like a drum set tuning video, and then make that a Q and A. If you'd like, just ask your questions in the comments and let us know. You see, that that sounds like an octobon. Like it sounds really I know it needs to go higher, but there we go. This head is very damaged. I can like feel the the marks in it. Well, either that or it was like put on and it was never tuned up all the way, because I can still I can hear the head cracking a little bit. Like when a head cracks, it means that it wasn't originally tuned up to that level, and it hasn't really been broken in. At least that's from what I've been told. Higher. So you're gonna do like a split double stroke roll. After this, we to do like a test. We can play the split game, but on each drum. If you'd watch, Possibly. as like a demo. Uh, then again, bear with us. We don't have a good quality mic. We're literally just using Isaac's yeah. phone. Okay. Good enough. Great. Nice. <laughs> you can't see my face anymore. <laughs> we are faceless. Okie dokie. We should uh, position the camera. Oh, that's yours. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, where'd my other stick go? I don't know. It doesn't. These are mine. Oh yeah. This is mine. Oh. That's yours. Okay. Where's the other one? Right here. All right. First things first. Let's position the camera. Oh, let me do this. Bear with us. You might fall over for a second. Please don't do that. Death, death. Yeah. How do you want to do that? Just do it uh, six times. I need one for each drum. Okay. Okay. So it is. Uh, yeah, that works. And then. Okay. Uh, can you see the camera okay? Or, like, I can are you see the shot? camera. That's alright. Okay. Alright. You want to tap it off? I did that wrong. Yeah. 
Uh, I'm dumb. We have never played this on tenors before. This we, is let, let's just do a demo. Uh, you want me to play an exercise? Go okay. ahead. Uh, if you know what this one is, leave a comment with your guess. Uh, it's very popular at a certain university in Michigan. Okay. I'm just playing my favorite stand chair, which is just... Another thing no, about tenors, they're extremely fun to play on, as you didn't know. And if anyone asks, no, we will not play Jig 2. Ever. Yeah, Jig 2 is kind of like forbidden. Out. It's overrated and dumb, and also we have been forbidden from playing it. Yeah. But on that note, 46 minutes in, we're done. Yeah, so uh, on that note, uh, <laughs> note, uh, funny. Um, okay, anyways, <laughs> we're done for today. Yeah, Another just, video will be posted maybe drop your, next week. Yeah, just drop your questions down. Uh, for like a future Q and A video of some other activity maintenance thing we do, uh, be on the lookout for a random note series where we showcase random instruments and talk, say a few words about them, and just yeah, adios. That's it. All right. Another video will be posted eventually. All right. Bye.